Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Panic, And we've got our offensive lineman, Hog Molly, draft preview. Weird this year because usually it's offensive tackle and then interior offensive line. Uh, we usually cut out one position that the Giants aren't going to take. that year. This year it's offensive tackle, so we're going all interior, interior offensive linemen. And probably the most centers we've ever done. I mean, we've got one, two, three, four, four centers, and I think five... When you include one guy, that, or no, five centers, maybe six, and maybe even seven. Justin, how are you? Well, you know, that's an NFL draft talking point is every guard can play center and every center can play guard, right? I mean, that's been the that's been the NFL draft talking point for the last couple of years, and we've debated it. We've gone back and forth. Uh, and how we view it uh, kind of depends on how the needs of our favorite team that we look at, right? You know, and now that Nick Gates is gone, uh, John Feliciano was with the 49ers. The Giants don't have an actual center on the roster. We are now viewing the center position uh, maybe a little bit differently in this year's draft, as in the Giants kind of do need a center. But will they be taking one with the premium pick? Does Joe Shane kind of believe in that? It's a debate that maybe we'll touch on throughout this episode. Bobby Skinner, how are you? Yeah, the Giants do not have anyone who started a game at center in the NFL. Now, unless they were to take the top guy we're going to talk about, Justin, I still think Ben Bredesen... Uh, should be starting at center day one because the rest of these guys outside of John Michael Smith, I think, need some time. Like, I, I'm not throwing any of these guys right in the lineup right away. Um, so, I, you know, brace yourself for week one, Ben Bredesen, to be the Giants' starting center most likely. But they need to invest in this pit position long term. And then hopefully you could get a guy who may, maybe you do feel comfortable starting day one and then you let Bredesen battle with a, you know, Bredesen, Azuda, and Glowinski battle for a job and, you know, Hopefully, they would be willing to unearth Glowinski despite his contract. I don't see that happening, but just putting it out there. So, a lot of guys in this class, no, none that I have a first-round grade on. None. Uh, no no interior offensive alignment that I have a first-round grade in, where last year I had three. And Kenyon Green and Zion Johnson, who were two of my favorite guard prospects we've ever done. And then Tyler Linderbaum as a late first. Yeah, I, I feel like we were spoiled last year. We were really spoiled. And this is even with Tyler Linderbaum. We were we were last year, Bobby. Now this is because Tyler Linderbaum was getting like top ten talk at one point, which was which was bonkers and bananas. And we both said, Well, if we were picking at the back end of the first round, we would love to take a Tyler Linderbaum. But the Giants had way more needs and holes and right. But even Tyler Linderbaum last year, who we were kind of like nitpicking and critiquing at times, I think would be I think he's I think I would rate uh, Tyler Lindebaum as a better prospect than John Michael Schmitz, right? Yeah, then all, all of these guys. He would be interior offensive lineman number one in this class outside of, you know, Green and... Yeah. Uh, or, you know, last year we ha- I had him as third after Kenyon Green and Zion Johnson. Who I, and we I were just spoiled. Both. Spoiled by those two guys, so... Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a position, you know, you look at it, the starting centers in the NFL and, gu- and guards usually aren't taken in the first round. So it's where you find these mid-round guys, and there's guys that I like in the mid-rounds, uh, especially a, a cat out of Arkansas that we'll talk about. All right, Justin, before we get into these, this preview, this episode was brought to you by one person, one special person, Gabe Whiteman, who, by the way, is actually not a Whiteman. He's black man. He's a black man. So it's black man Gabe Whiteman. Justin, who is this uh, black Whiteman? Is that a fact? No, I just made it up. Oh, but that's, his name is Gabe Whiteman. What's no? How about how about this trivia? And he's straight, so it's uh, okay. Straight black man, Gabe Whiteman. Oh, okay. Um, what's different about my recording setup right now? Don't know. Half my face is dark. I don't have my light on. patreoncom slash giants. That's where uh, Gabe Whiteman went. Um, who was a black man? Gabe Whiteman went to patreoncom slash giants. Two dollars a month plus mother cheers to get to hang out with us live while we record the shows. Bobby Skinner sent you some stickers in the mail, and uh, there's some shirt raffles that we have a couple times a month. Thanks to our patrons. I'm going to go turn on my light. All right, Justin. Let's get into these interior offensive linemen, and obviously we'll go in order of of the way that I have them ranked. Um, and the, the top-ranked guy, I'm, I agree with maj- majority of the consensus has this guy as their number one. Not everybody, but the majority. Um, and that's John Michael Smith, the center out of Minnesota. Justin, uh, he was a guy I watched in the middle of the year. 
uh, of the season and really liked him. I remember messaging football group. I was like, check out the Sean Michael Smiths guy. He's kind of like a, a draft crush of mine. And then he went down to the senior bowl was arguably, you know, the best player down at the senior bowl. And I think put himself ahead of a guy like Osiris Torrance down there. Um, and now is, you know, a lot of people are mocking him to the giants at 25. Now I've seen Mel Kuyper and Dane Brugler have him there at 57 for the giants. So that's, that's the hope for him. And we'll, we'll talk about where we project him six foot three, 301 pounds. Justin, he is the oldest guy on this list that we're talking about at 24 years old. Uh, but he's the best, right? And even look at his 2021 film, which I have a film breakdown coming out on him, uh, his 2021 film. It's better than any, uh, anybody else in this class. And he's got a wrestling background and it shows, uh, in the run game, Justin, he fires off the ball and he works leverage. He works leverage really, really well, especially in like the wide zone stuff, like those reach blocks. He wins them in every way, whether it's flipping your hips and sealing off a lane, whether it's blocking that through and getting push on the guy, whether it's a hey, turning them and putting guys in the dirt. And then in pass pro, I, I really think he does a good job, even though he's not the athletic, like he's not this crazy go- uh, offensive lineman athlete that you look for in top picks, but as he works his hands really well, strong grip. Like is able to extend on guys, replaces his hands and uses uses independent hands. So Justin, he's the best player uh, on this list to me. The things that are holding him back from being a first round one is the age, but I'm not going to take a guy out of a, a round just because of age. And he's not he's not a freak athlete. Right, right. Um, you mentioned a uh, film breakdown coming out on JM Football. Uh, five out of the eight players that we are talking about. Today, including John, John Michael Schmitz, that breakdown is out today. Um, you have done film breakdowns on that channel. So go check out JM Football. If you like us, if you support us, um, that's like the that's like the place to go to to really support us. That's like our next step. So go check that out. Yeah, John Michael Schmitz, he was the best and most dominant player uh, at the Senior Bowl all week. He is 24. He's turning 25 in March, so he did just turn uh, 24. Uh, log 35 career starts, only missing two games, one because of injury, one opt-out, over the last three seasons has so much experience at center and being a center, being a center. And I think that's really, really valuable, especially when you talk about the Giants. They have no center on the roster right now. Bobby, here, here's my thing with John Michael Schmitz right now, because, you know, obviously we watch him in the Senior Bowl. Love fest, love fest, love fest. But now we're getting to the nitty gritty of we got to figure out who are the Giants taking, especially at 25. That'll be the big concern night one. And then I 100% agree with you at 57. John Michael Schmitz is there. Run to the phone. He is a really good football player and a really good center, like I said, but doesn't have the insane athleticism or strength slash frame that a player is worth taking in round one. Do you agree or disagree with that? You're muted. I like the way he carries his weight, um, like frame wise. And I, I think he's. Like, even if he may not be, you know, the strongest knockback guy in the world, like he uses his 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 leverage and really well to and get I more push than some guys that are stronger. But he's not the – he's not – again, he doesn't have like the crazy foot speed that you're looking for in, in first-round interior offense alignment. Right. And, and I agree with that. And the reason why I bring up frame is because – like Osiris Torrance, you know, when you're comparing, you know, which which interior O line is one O lineman is one slot one or two, Osiris Torrance has that frame, has that strength, and it's natural to him. Whereas John Michael Schmitz, you see that strength show up in his play style, and you know he's not he's not a light player, but it's in his play style and it's in his tenacity that I really feel like you see that strength show up. Where in the NFL, you could be a tena- you know tenacious player. But it's going to come easier for guys like Osiris Torrance than John Michael Schmitz. And again, this isn't to dismiss him, but when you you got to pull hairs when you're talking about if you're if if a guy's worthy at 25, right? Yeah, and again, like he in the pass pro, he jumps defensive linemen, he gets his hands on them, he works his hands, his his feet work well, even though they're not the fastest in the world. Um, some negatives in the run game, I think he's can be a little herky jerky. Where it's like he's he's based he's like you know playing like a wrestler almost and uh, 
it'll let him like and he'll lean and it'll lead to guys slipping off blocks after like that initial pu- he'll get initial push but guys will slip off blocks at times and then working to the second level there's just it's mistimed and, and he misses targets too often but let's just talk about him 25 57 uh i don't want john michael smith's at 25 and it's for this simple reason justin I think there's going to be better players there, right? Yes. Like, I think it's as simple as that. Like, we, you know, we could talk about, I want this guy to be there at 20 5. I want this guy to be there at 25. I think there's simply just going to be better, like, there will be a handful of better prospects than John Michael Smith's at pick 25. And that's why I want to take him there. But again, there is, like, the the dream of him being in there at pick 57 is not lost. Uh, because some teams, like, one interior offensive lineman don't you know centers don't always get picked super early he's 24 years old and there's this kind of this joe Tipman love fest who is young um and has like you know that athleticism and frame that you're looking for uh and teams like to grab wide receivers and stuff and again like i Corners, said dane, yeah. D- dane brugler who is i think probably the most respected draft guy did his seven round mock draft round two pick 57 for the giants was John Michael Smith for him. And he's not a Giants fan just praying that that guy falls to 57. And Mel Kuyper, less respected, but he put him there too. So the the hope of him being in there at 57 is not dead. And I 100% hope that he is there. 100%. Like, is there, is there... And I'll pull up my big board. Is there anybody, like, that can also be there at 57 that's realistic that you would take over John Michael Smith's? Um, Emmanuel Forbes has suddenly become a top 25 player in the draft. That's happened over the last couple yes, weeks. Yeah, yeah not, but here's the thing is I don't see him there at 57. Right, right. But I, be, be, I'm, in, I'm saying in, in past mock drafts, you've taken him at 57, but he's he's no longer seen as a second rounder. He's seen as a first rounder. Um, I'm just trying to go through name names in my head. Tyreek Stevenson right now is the one that could possibly be there that I would take over John Michael Smith's. The rest, I, I don't see any of them being there in, in a realistic, Yeah, if I'm being realistic. I think I think John Michael Schmitz and two very good players, two very good prospects. I think John Michael Schmitz, I would take over Tyreek Stevenson. I think it's more of a lock that Schmitz is going to be a solid pro than Stevenson. Stevenson at one point was kind of looked at and this is like maybe pre-senior bowl you know you looked at kind of like this maybe third round guy maybe fourth round guy and then he's kind of like jumped up oh, a lot of corners have kind of jumped up draft board so yeah yeah so i mean tyreek stevenson really is the only one maybe if drew sanders somehow fell because teams weren't in love with his play style right but after that like all these people who i have as b pluses which is high second round picks I don't see there. And then, you know, that's why I have Michael Smith as a B plus. And then you have the B players, which obviously I would take John Michael Smith's over them. Um, so I, I know it's, there's a lot, I, again, I'm, I'm firmly in, I don't want him at pick 25. I just think there's going to be better players there. Centers aren't usually taken that early. Um, if he was clear, best player available, like Ty, if Tyler Linderbaum was there at 25, I'd probably yes. take him, you know, yes. there, there might be other players there that I like more that I would take over Tyler Linderbaum, but I wouldn't have any second thoughts about taking Tyler Linderbaum at 25, you know, where last year we were debating him, like, do if they did trade back in the late 20s, do you take Linderbaum? You know, and there were some questions about it, but you'd feel confident about it. John Michael Smith's to me, I'm, I'm not taking him at pick 25. Um, we're, I'm not forcing needs simple and i'm not forcing a need for a 25 a 24 year old who i don't think is a first round player right i don't get too concerned about the age all that much bobby because it's not like we're talking about john michael schmitz is playing for you know he's coming from guard and he's never snapped the ball in his life right he has so many years so many starts so much experience making those calls up front Plus, I just feel like interior you know, offensive line takes time to develop too. Where it almost could be a benefit, where it's like you get a you get a a year of struggles almost out 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 of you. You know, obviously there's an adjustment, but and I also just feel like these guys can play for a long time. You know, if if you're worried about career longevity, um, you know, if that's why you're a little hesitant drafting a guy that's a little older, I think interior offensive linemen, I think they can kind of play for for a long time. And again, Schmitz has that experience at center. The Giants desperately need experience at center. So if they want to go there 57, like I said, I'm running to the phone. I am running to the phone. It's not I hope that 
you know, there's a lot of NFL teams in the first round and then even in the early part of the second round. I hope there's NFL teams that ask kind of the same question that I asked you about, well, you know, he's good because he's tenacious, but he's not a good athlete. He's not the best athlete and he doesn't have the best frame. Is this guy really worth it? I hope a lot of teams ask that question until Joe Shane at 57. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, the next guy on this list, he's a he's a Rob Sale kid. Rob Sale, the former Giants offensive lineman coach, coached him at the Louisiana with the Raging Cajuns, and he transferred over to Florida with Billy Napier and Rob Sale, and that is Florida guard Osiris Torrance, who is the frame, six foot five, three hundred thirty pounds, almost thirty four inch arms. Justin, it's kind of weird that his name has not been spoken on a lot lately where it seemed like going into the senior bowl like he was a top like a high like hey end of the first type of guy i just haven't seen people talking about him much and it's kind of confusing because i do view him as the the second best interior offensive lineman in this class um and i think a couple reasons for that justin is again he's again a guy who's not overly athletic and can just kind of have heavy feet in both the pass and the rush but this is a guy with knockback power. Like out of this class, if there's a guy who's going to put your hands on you and push your ass, like the the offensive version of Mazzy Smith from Michigan, it is Osiris Torrance. Like I want to see Osiris Torrance versus Mazzy Smith week one. Like everyone looks forward to week one rookie matchups. I want to see Torrance versus Mazzy Smith. Like just you know the uh, you know a movable force versus uh, what's the phrase? The first the unstoppable object. I can't there remember. There you go. Um, you know I'm bad with sayings. I get them wrong all the time. I do Rickyisms. I think the yeah. I think the reason why is he's just his pass pro film is not great, right? Um, like he plays with great strength. He has a wide base. Once he gets hands on you, uh, he's awesome. Like and he has a powerful punch. And again, like just locks on to defense alignment to end the rep. Um, and like once he's connected, his footwork's good. But it's getting to that point in pass pro. Where it's like he can be a little slow getting to the full man. Uh, his punch can be off. Uh, and again, he's just kind of got some heavy feet. But again, like this is a, he's not like a horrible athlete. He's got the size. He's got the strength. He had a bad combine. I think that might be hurting his stock a little bit too. But again, 6'5", 330, long arms, and that type of knockback power. He's a guy who... I wouldn't be surprised if he's the first interior offensive lineman taken off the board. Even though he's not much younger... He's, a, he's only a year younger than John Michael Smith at 23 years old. Yeah, 23 turning 24 in, in the month of January. Um, he, he's got that frame. He's got that frame and gigantic hands. His, his hands are almost in the 99th percentile of hand size. Um, his grown man strength is ready to go right away. And that's where, you know, it, there may be NFL teams that draw the line, the difference between if, you, if you're debating interior O-line one or, one or two. NFL teams may draw the line with, hey, if you value strength over athleticism, um, you know, Osiris Torrance has that strength and frame ready to go from day one. Um, zero penalties in 2022 uh, as well. And coaches have also raved about his uh, his work ethic. I wish all of our guys were as genuine and coachable learners as Cybo. And I think that's a really cool nickname, by the way, that, that they gave him at Florida, Cybo. Um, Cyborg, I think that's a really, it's kind of like a really, a really cool nickname. Started 47 games over the last four seasons, including double digit starts at both guard spots. Very little weaknesses to his game. I mean, hey, I, I think if the, if the biggest weakness is kind of just like not the best athlete, question mark, if that's the biggest weakness to your game, uh, you're a pretty damn good prospect. Yeah, but with John Michael Smith, you could say he's not the best athlete, but it doesn't really show up on film versus college players. But with Osiris, it does show up. Like, he will struggle to get to that full man relationship, like where he's yeah. head up with the defense alignment, and he doesn't have the speed to recover. You know, where John Michael Smith, he's going to he's gonna jump set you and get to that full man relationship and not let you win that, uh, you know. But what Torn, like where John Michael Smith is work great at, you know, firing off and getting leverage in the run game. Osiris Torrance just plays with great posture, good footwork to get into the blocks. And then that just, that knockback power comes from his hands and not from having to lean into a guy. And that's where he's like consistently like, uh, you know, like and that's where he's better than a guy like John Michael Smith's. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So Osiris Torrance, I, I'm thinking like a, a gap scheme, right? You know, not really maybe a scheme that runs, uh, 
you know, outside the tackles or outside zone or, you know, you like you see some NFL offenses do. I see Osiris Torrance. If you kind of run a maybe a little bit of a, I don't want to say bland offense, but kind of like an in-between the tackle kind of r- rushing offense, I think Osiris Torrance kind of fits there, right? Fits best there. Yeah, which limits him. Right, because yeah. you want to run zone in the NFL. Like if you're if you want to run the ball well and be make it a huge advantage for you, you want to be able to run zone. You know, um, uh, but again, I, I don't think he's. I, I think he can. You can move. You know, you can do some stuff like that. But you're just not yep. going to be. You're not really going to be pulling him, bring him outside the tackles. You're not going to ask him to reach block a, a four eye. You know, you're going to be asking him to go head up on guys that are in front of him, and that's where he's going to do well. I agree, and I think he's got flexible hips, like to once he gets to that landmark to seal guys off in the zone too. So, all right, let's uh, let's hit the next guy on this list, and that is a guy I really like. His film is awesome, and that is Steve Avila out of TCU, six three and a half, three hundred thirty two pounds, decent size arms at thirty three inch arms, three year starter, Justin at guard center and tackle so this is a guy you can move to center right and for his size his athleticism to me is very very good and you pair it with rapid feet this guy has the best pass pro like reps in this class he gets the guys he extends his arms and his foot speed is like he's got rapid foot fire that like makes him excellent mirroring defense alignment go watch him play in the college football playoffs versus mazzy smith versus Jalen carter and no one did better than uh than steve avila did versus those guys um and he's great iq for like pass protections you know there's a lot of times justin where you see this guy helping out the left tackle like he's like he doesn't have anyone covering him he checks and he'll fly out and go and help the left tackle obviously tc's offense is a little weird uh coming from the big big uh 12 but this guy is a pass protector if you wanted one and that's what and Again, we're talking about all these guys. Some of these guys are going to be there at 57 out of these. Like, I would bet that one of these first three guys is going to be there at 57. And Steve Avila would be, I, I would be ha- very happy with that pick, even though, again, a little older, 23 and a half. Yeah, 23 turning 24 in the month of October. Yeah, I, I, Steve Avila would be a really good consolation prize if we can't get John Michael Schmitz. Uh, I, I kind of walked away from the Senior Bowl saying, I want an interior offensive lineman in the top 100 just because I feel like there's a lot of guys that, you know, there's a lot of guys that may be there that that makes sense. And I think Steve Avila could be somebody um, who could be there for the Giants at, at 57. He dominated at the Senior Bowl, too. I mean, was uh, not John Michael Schmitz-esque, but he still was one of the best players at Mobile, in Mobile, Alabama for that entire week. He mirrors like a mime. I mean, a, a, you anything you do, I'm going to do, and, I, and I'm going to follow you. Um, never in a hurry, cool, calm, collected player, able to make adjustments mid-play on hand, on hand replacement, hand adjustment as well. Has that NFL frame, Bobby mentioned, 6'3", 332. I'll add that he has 33-inch arms as well. Rarely allows his base to narrow. His feet are always ready to move. Um, rarely gets beat by strength. Um He's a love it player for me, Bobby. I really like Steve Avila. Really enjoyed watching him uh, at the Senior Bowl. He was a team captain, utilizes a hop step, and you mentioned that he has experience starting at multiple positions. Here's what keeps me. Here's where he's a fall off from the two uh, guys we met. We talked about before him in the run game. There is a lot to be desired. Like he'll fire into blocks, Justin, but his kind of like his pad level will rise. And his feet will stop on contact, and he just doesn't block through guys. Like he just doesn't—he doesn't roll his hips off. It's like he—and he can struggle getting to the right angles too. Where it's like you love the first two steps, and then he gets to the block, his pad level rises, his feet stop moving, and he's not able to sustain blocks, right? And he's not—and he's not working angles well. If you put him, in, if you have him pull, he flies into his pulls and stuff. And you see him—if you see him working to the second level, it's awesome. But at the end of the day. On the interior, your main job is blocking the guys on the fr- on the on that front line. Not really, get, you know, getting with linebackers is like a bonus. And there's a lot to be desired there. Where it's just like this is this is not fun film. Watching his pass pro, fun film. But in the run game, again, there's just too many times where it's like he's firing off into the blocks, and then he's basically like almost stopping at that, and he's not able to get movement. And guys are gonna squeeze him down and you know, lever him into gaps and that will mess up the run game. So that's where Avila for me 
needs to really improve. And he's got the ability to do it. He's just got to do it. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you don't think that's something that they can kind of coach into him because he really understands leverage. He really understands the the concept of lower man wins in the pass game. And I think with his technique in the pass game and his attention to detail with that, I think if you get a coach that really instills in him, and also you got to remember TCU, Big 12, weird. You know, they don't really run a conventional running scheme, right? If you get an NFL coach that's going to really teach the fundamentals on how to run block and how to run block in that specific scheme, in an NFL, an NFL scheme, I th- I trust that Avila will be able to, that you'll be able to kind of coach that into him. Playing with more leverage, lower man wins, and he has the frame. He has the strength. 332, 33, three inch arms. He has an NFL frame that's already ready to rock and roll. I think if an, if, if an NFL coach can kind of instill it in him, I think he can grow in that department. Yeah, it, it's the the thing is though it's not like he's got a leaning problem and it's like play with better posture or his hands come in a little too wide or low to me it's like it's it to me it's hard to coach out of a guy hey keep your feet moving through contact and don't let your pad level raise at the point of attack um and that's where i don't see i i, I, I can see an improvement but i don't ever i don't i don't ever see him improving into this great run blocker like the way he can be as a right. pass blocker and part of me is fine with that. You want you want a complete offensive alignment, but part of me is fine with that because he is so good at pass blocking. And you know, I want the Giants to move to a team where they look more like they did towards the end of 2022 than the beginning of 2021. I don't want the Brian Dable led Giants to ever go back to okay, we're just gonna we have to run the ball for 30 rushes a game. Uh, if they if that's a game plan and it works, great. But I don't want them to be forced into running the ball a lot. So I'm going to value offense alignment that can really pass block. And Avila can do that. Yeah, and that's and that's what you look for. Like when you see guys who succeed in the next levels, like you look for the Steve Avila types. Um, and again, like like you said, it's not just like good pass pro reps. Like he is a high IQ player. Like uh, go watch. I mean, again, watch him versus in the college football playoff where it's like you playing against the best of the best competition and i was really really impressed and he was a guy who i wasn't wasn't really on my radar going into the senior bowl coming out of it was like okay yeah and I, th- I think he was my first watch and first film breakdown coming out of the senior bowl it was like let's get steve avila done um didn't look too bad against jalen carter <laughs> no no and guys like osiris torrance struggled with jalen carter more than uh, Steve Avila did you know and Mazzy Smith who we'll talk about a, a guy from Ohio State where the Mazzy Smith reps worry me about this guy with Avila not at all you know um, even though it's not like they were going up against each other 1v1 all game but they had their fair share all right why don't you read an ad all right let's read an ad and let's talk about Manscaped if you haven't already heard the leaders in Below the waist grooming are traveling north of your South Pole. Hello, with their revolutionary Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Plus, they've also launched the brand new Weed Whacker 2.0. Oh, I need that Weed Whacker because you want to know what's funny? Before this ad read, I'm like, I'm going to talk about how that Weed Whacker is so freaking awesome because I, I have nose hairs that grow. I don't know where they come from. They come from my nose. I don't know where they come from, though. They grow like there's no tomorrow. It's out of control. They, yep, thank you. You confirmed that nose hairs come from the nose. Uh, but the Weed Whacker is awesome. It is an awesome product. And now that they have launched a brand new Weed Whacker 2.0, I think I need to get it. And I can go to manscaped.com and using our code GIANTS for 20% off plus free shipping at checkout. And how about the Beard Hedger and how about that Beard Kit, though? Uh, The Beard Hedger has 20 hair-cutting lengths with all with one guard, so no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. That Pro Kit comes with beard shampoo and conditioner, beard oil, and beard balm. So, to get 20% off and free shipping with our code GIANTS at manscaped.com, that's what you got to do. Always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. 20% off free shipping with our code GIANTS. Thank you to Manscaped. You'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did. All right, next on this list, Justin, is the guy that I differ with the public view on this guy than uh, than than the most, right? Um, and that is Wisconsin's Joe Tipman, who's six foot six, three hundred thirteen pounds. Great frame. That's you know, obviously center. You don't need to be super tall, but it's a great frame, and he can move. He's very athletic. Uh, he's very athletic when you you get him out and move him in space. 
With that frame, though, he has 32 and three quarter inch arms, which is shorter than Steve Avila, shorter than Osiris Torrance, shorter than Ricky Stromberg, shorter than Emil Echior, uh, Echior, who's six foot two. So he doesn't have the longest arms in the world, despite being six foot six. And good athlete. I think he's a strong player. But to me, his film is lackluster. Uh, I've seen this guy lose the point of attack on almost an every down basis in the pass pro and does not have dominant reps in pass pro. Does not have them. We talked about these last three guys. They got great pass pro reps. Joe Tipman doesn't have them. And it starts with he loses the point of attack on a consistent basis. He leaves his chest open and his hands come low. And that worries me. It's not about it's if when you're consistently losing like that, that's what uh, helps me, worries me. Now, okay, well the run game. Have you seen these clips of this guy moving out in space and pulling? That's awesome. I love that. I like that. But that's not what being an offensive lineman's about. And I've seen this guy in the run game too many plays where he's on his face because he's leaning. Uh, his run footwork can be inconsistent. Um. He needs to keep his feet moving through blocks, and he plays with a, a high pad level, um, and with his hands not really coming, right? Uh, I I don't like this guy like other people have him. I have him as a late third round pick, and this is some people's number one interior offensive lineman. This, some people have him in the first round. I view him as a third round pick. Uh, there's ability there, right? So I can. You know, like this isn't Wyatt Davis from a couple years ago where I'm like, this guy is not going to be a, a player in the NFL. He's not going to be. Joe Tipman can be, right? Um, because you do see some good stuff. You know, like it, I could think his footwork in the pass pro is it, fairly solid, even though his lateral ability is lacking. But to me, I see a guy who is six foot six and can move well in space. That to me is not a guy worthy of a first round pick or a second round pick. You got to be better than what Joe Tipman is for me to say you're a top uh, two round pick. Yeah, Dane Brugler has him 43 overall. He has John Michael Schmitz uh, 59 overall. Um, you know, and the age may play a factor into that. 22 uh, years old, like he's the youngest guy on this besides Luke Weipler. And he just turned 22. He's turning 23 in the month in the month of March. So yeah, he's a mover. I, I think he's one of the best pulling offensive linemen. Um, in, in this class, he's definitely, I think, the best pulling center. And again, you know how how transferable is that? How often is a center really pulling? Uh, he's strong, and he's a and he's a gym warrior for sure. I think you're gonna. I think I know the answer to this question, but you know this is just where my brain naturally goes to, Bobby. If he's such a good mover, if he's such a good athlete, and he can play in space, is this guy a guard in the NFL? He could be, right? But he could, plays could, center. Could moving to guard hide some of the deficiencies and the and the symbol hands that you're seeing, or will it really not make that much of a difference? So it, what it will do is it will it gives it will you more highlight his athleticism the, more. It highlights your athleticism more, and it gives you more space between the defense alignment and something. And again, this guy was preparing to play guard, and they moved him to center this year. So that that goes into all of this too. But at center, it's like you don't have really you you got to become off firing and you got to have your hands ready and you got to play long. You can't just be long, and he doesn't do that. Where guard can give you some more space to like you know kind of get ready for that. But also, I mean, when he does have space and gets depth and pass protection, guys are firing into his chest and his hands are coming late and he's losing pass pro reps. Um, you know, so it's again this is I think this is a guy who. Who has it? I think he can be a good player in the NFL. Uh, I think in reality, he most likely, if you're looking at it, like without just being like top notch, what can this guy be potential? Like you're betting on this guy becoming an average center. I don't see this guy ever going towards really good, great territory. You know, so like I said, this isn't like Wyatt Davis two years ago where I was like, this player is not good. He is a whole, he is a horrible offensive lineman. People are totally off on him. So I, I see it, and it the improvement is stuff that you can improve on. But I worry that how much is he going to improve on when the stuff he's struggling with is on an every down basis? Like where there's there's stuff other guys struggle with, but it's not on an every down basis. And with Tipman, again, watch him. In the, 
Like, watch him not pulling, and I'll show you a guy who falls on his face. I'll show you a guy who's leaning, and guys are ripping through and consistently beating in the run game. And pass pro, a guy who's consistently allowing guys to get into his chest. And as defensive tackles get better and better, they will take advantage of a guy like Joe Tittman. And you did show that, which is I'm kind of surprised that you made a film breakdown on Tittman because you usually don't make film breakdowns on guys that you you don't really like, but you made it constructive and, like, the film showed it. The field showed it showed it pretty pretty consistently too. So uh again, JM football, go check it out. All right. Next guy. This is a guy I like, and I might be a so now I'm you know, I follow people who cover other teams and do draft stuff like us. And this guy is falling into the everyone's higher than the consensus on him. So is the consensus just gonna be higher on him? Um and that's Ricky Stromberg out of Arkansas, who's six foot three, three hundred six pounds. 33 and a quarter inch arms, so three inches shorter, but longer arms than the last guy we talked about. Uh, I think he's a good athlete for the center position and plays with the demeanor that you want. And in the run game, Justin, he is very quick off the snap, firing into blocks. What, do you want to, who, who, who works the best combo blocks in this draft? It's Ricky Stromberg. Like, he will fire off, gets good leverage, will get good like uh, good initial movement, and then get to the second level, and it's beautiful, right? And you're at the center spot, you're working a lot of combo stuff. Um and it and it's a it's a thing of beauty. Now why he's not very high and I understand this and, and agree with a lot of this is one, he doesn't he doesn't have like a great punch. Like he's not he doesn't have just knockback power on himself. Like it is about leverage and working combos with him. And then in pass pro, there's some bad uh there's some bad pass pro protection reps. But again, I think this with this guy, these are things that can be approved on improved on, right? Um you know, like uh he can over over punch. Um you know, and just kind of like be, be duck his head into stuff. So it's like get this guy to play with some better posture, and I think he can improve, improve as a pass blocker. Yeah, Bobby, this is another full time center. He has a lot of experience at center, and he has a lot of experience making calls up front. But he also has 40, 40, 44 starts over the last four years at three different offensive line spots. He does have starts at center and both guard spots. He's played through injuries uh, as well. Uh, he has impressive technique, strength, football IQ, and smarts on the run game that you feel like those skills can be transferable um, as, a, as a pass blocker. I know you talk a lot about that in your film breakdown. It's like, well, look at what he's able to do as a run blocker, and now look at what he's not able to kind of do as a pass blocker. Look at how he kind of already works, and you say that those skills can kind of be transferable over in some of the areas that he's lacking, and I, and I, totally, I totally agree with you. He has the athleticism. I feel like this is... You know, Stromberg's a guy. I, I don't know if the have the Giants met with Stromberg. I don't think not they that have. I know of. Not that not, I know yeah, of. Not that we know of. But I feel like this is a guy that you know maybe Bobby Johnson and Joe Shane likes. If they like athletes, if they like guys that are are quick and you know they have good foot speed, I think Stromberg could be a fit for the Giants, and I think he is a fit for the Giants. Yeah, uh, I, I I definitely think he is too. Like, and the stuff needs to improve in pass pros. Like one. Big part of it is just slide to the po- slide to the rush better, right? Where it's like he needs to slide to that full man relationship, you know. But once he has hands on guys, like he's awesome. Like and he reworks them, uh, you know. He knows how to rework them. And again, like you said, there's things that I think are transferable that he does well in the run that should help him grow as a pass protector. Yeah, if you're talking about combo blocks, right, and moving well off that, you think you know you're saying that his lateral movement's good in the run game. Well. Your lateral movement should be good in the pass game too. So let's transfer that over, right? Yeah, and he'll. But and again, there's times where like he'll he'll over punch and and duck his head, and that'll lead him to have some bad reps. But with Stromberg, he's he's the guy who I think should sit to start and grow his game too. So like I really like him, but I'm also not slating him in the start day one. I I think there's those things need to grow, and I think those things will should be taught upon by sitting on the bench to start his career. Yeah, I'd say this outside is a guy that's of, projected in the fourth round, fourth and fifth round, more so than the third round, Justin. Yeah, outside of the top three guys that we talked about, and, and was Tipman the fourth guy that we talked about? And you know we're yeah. not high, that high on him. So outside of the three guys that we talked about, like the the rest of these guys are 
hey, let's let's get you on the bench. Let's get you to develop. You talk all the time about how guards, particularly interior offensive linemen, how it's really tough to transfer over year one. And you saw what Josh Azudu, when he was kind of thrown in there right away, he was kind of really bad. And then when he got kind of a chance to sit, Ben Bredesen kind of went in there, took over that spot, and then he came back in a little bit later in the season. He developed a little bit more. So Stromberg is certainly in that category of definitely would benefit from sitting down a little bit, getting those reps, learning how to play the position, learning how to play the NFL position of center, and then maybe going in there, maybe having his opportunity because Ben Bredesen can't make it through a whole season. So I, I like Ricky Stromberg. Like he's I a, agree. Like I, I pick 89, like Ricky Stromberg – is going to be on my radar for that pick, definitely. I like think, without, without a doubt. I think I already. Uh, I did a mock draft. I did like my first mock draft over the weekend, and I think I already have a perfect ten. Um, he may or may not be on there. All right, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right, next on this list is Ohio State. The Buckeyes. Luke Weipler, six foot three, three hundred three pounds, short arms, thirty one and five inch, uh, five eighths inch. Tested really well the combine, like had had as good of a combine as you can get. You know, four five three in the shuttle, twenty nine bench press reps, thirty and a half inch vertical jump, which is good for centers. Um, he is a center only prospect, obviously, and he's athletic, and it allows him to win consist- consistently. Justin, like he does. He, he plays football right. Like, he's got good IQ. Like, he's got good footwork. He uses his hands well. Uh, he's not leaning. He plays with great posture. Um, you know, he gets good depth when he's uncovered and picks up stunts and uh, stuff like that. Uh, and in the run game, like, great first step. Gets the angles quickly and effectively. His hands land well. Here's my issue. I don't know if he has the core strength, the balance to compete at the NFL level. Like, so verse, we'll bring up Mozzie Smith again for Michigan. Now, I'm not expecting the guy to go and beat Mozzie Smith every rep. But every time these guys were connected on a block versus Michigan, Mozzie Smith was having his way with him. And that's a guy, like, you could look at a guy, you know, Garrett Bradbury is obviously drafted in the first round from the Vikings, where it's like, hey, man, you might be able to play smart, good technique, you got good film. You can't hang with NFL defense alignment because NFL defense alignment, you're going to be getting Mozzie Smith every single week. And that's what worries me about Weifler. Is like as good as his film is and as good as like, – like he plays football right. He has good technique. He moves well. Like he's got solid strength. But that's what worries me about Weifler um, is that like I, can, can, he, can he hang with, with the strength and athleticism of defensive tackles – in the NFL when they're putting that together. Um, but the counter argument to that is like, okay, but he's the youngest guy in the class. Like right. he's not and even that, 22 yet. Yeah. That's exactly where I was going to point to. Um, I mean, how much strength are you actually going to develop at the NFL level, you know, to just totally become you know, the player that you need to be. Th- that's, that's a good question. He's never going to be a dominant center, Justin, No, but can he get to a level of he's an average center? Yeah, for sure. Uh, 21 turning 22 in the month of May. I believe it's May 3rd, if I have that remembered correctly. I'm a sucker for guys that play the game right. Guys that, like, offensive linemen that are very, very good technically. He's athletic. He's balanced. He, he choppy feet. His feet are chop, 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 chop with good hand placement. He's agile, and he knows how to get good leverage. I'm just a... I'm a sucker for guys that kind of play the position in that way that aren't overly relying on, you know, just demolishing the guy that's in front of you. Now, if you're getting demolished on the other end, <laughs> it doesn't matter how, you know, how good of a technique you have, right? But especially for a guy, you know, we're talking, you know, where do you have Luke Weipler kind of kind of ranked? Um th- I guess third round, but Oh, I- that's high. <laughs> Yeah, fourth round is where I feel comfortable with Luke Weifler. Yeah, and, and I and I would agree with that. I I would agree with that. Um, he has to get stronger. His arms are a little bit shorter. Um, so especially with the short arms and needing to increase strength, it's not the the best of combos. But he's very good technically. St. Joe's Montvale alum. Uh, I know this doesn't mean anything to you, but it means a lot to me. You know, if you're from the state of New Jersey, if you follow New Jersey high school football, uh, St. Joe's Montvale is pretty darn good. I believe. 
it was 20, not 2018, was it? Or does, does that make sense? If Yeah, it makes sense. 2018, I believe he won the state championship with St. Joe's Montville. He's a younger player who's declaring a year earlier than players usually declare with anyway. He's well beyond his years from a technical standpoint. He's a full-time center. Increase some strength, and let's see what we can get. You mentioned he's from New Jersey, right? And he, I believe he has a high school wrestling background, but obviously that strength doesn't show up on a... On, on film. Yes, I did mention New Jersey, Bobby. You know what else is from New Jersey? The Devils. The Stanley Cup champions, baby. But guess what? The baseball season is in full swing. Whether you're rooting for the home team or betting your favorite player, DraftKings Sportsbook has got you covered for all this season's action. Right now, new customers can place a $5 pregame money line bet and get $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. Plus, everyone can hit out of the park with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. Boost your winnings with each leg. Yeah, you add up to 100%. So obviously you can, you know, bet on baseball and all that stuff. But guys, I mean, it's NHL and NBA playoffs. Now my Nets are dead. By the way, (laughs) the Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving years have ruined me as a Nets fan. Because in past years, like you get up, you get excited even just to be in the playoffs, right? It's just like I've tasted, I've I've tasted title aspirations and even if they were up, they were tied 1 1 and they won game two. It doesn't bring me the feelings inside that the last two years. Gosh, it's crazy how short it really lasted when you think about the KD injury and getting traded this year. But, um, but you got the Devils versus Rangers. So pick, you know, pick your side on one of those. You know, Devils in game one or minus one and a half makes sense. The Rangers are plus one and a half. Um, but pick whichever side you want on that. So join the big league action now on DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app and sign up with code WORLD. New customers can bet just $5 on any pregame money line and get $150 in bonus bets if their team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code WORLD. Oh, boy. Gambling I... problem. Oh, Call 1-800-GAMBLER in Massachusetts. Call 800-327-5050 or visit Gambling Helpline. MA.org in New York, call 8778 Hope NY or text Hope NY in Kansas, call 1 800 522 4700. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino Resort, Kansas City, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state specific responsibility gambling resources. And speeding. All right, Justin, who's next on this list? Who do we got? Who's next? Um, well, I have something to admit. I desperately have to piss but i'm going to carry this through we have emil eckier jr from alabama six to 314 pounds 30, 33 and 7 inch, inch arms uh he is 23 23 turning 24 next january and bobby skinner i guess he'll tell you more because that's how this the flow of the show goes yeah justin he's a three-year starter at guard for uh the crimson tide i see him moving to center like, one, Ooh. he's six two and a half, and his play style kind of, like, fits center, where smaller guy, moves well, had, like, a high IQ, like, uses leverage well, good athlete, you know, quick feet, not not elite for his size, but good athlete, um, and loose hips. Like, I, I, Echior could be the steal of the interior offensive lineman in this class to me. I agree. I really do think he's, like, like you see him work to the second level, it's beautiful. Like uh, he'll work leverage in the run game. He'll torque guys. He'll redirect defenders. Uh, and working to the second level, like only Ricky Stromberg in this class is better than that. Uh, and again, plays with a high IQ. Now pass pro needs some work, uh, but he plays with the good posture and knee bend you want. But he'll be over punchy. We'll have low hands. You know, like that two hand punch and pass pro. Um, you know, but got quick feet, can mirror defense alignment pretty consistently, but he's just kind of a head ducker and uh, a little overzealous. So it's like things that you can't improve on. So if you're asking me like which one, who who do we look back at three years and from this interior offensive line class is a steal. I think Ekior might be it for me. Yeah, I, I totally agree, man. And I went to the Iron Bowl, you know, Alabama, Auburn uh, this past year. It wasn't Will Anderson Jr., um, you know, Bryce Young was making some fun plays, sure, but he's the quarterback. He touches the ball every play. There was one player that I couldn't take my eye off of, and then 
there were plays where I did take my eye off him because he wasn't in the game. Emilio Eckier Jr. stood out more than any other player during that Iron Bowl that I saw the, this past year. And I don't really watch a lot, a ton of college football during the regular season, but when I was at that game on field level, he really did stick out. And then Alabama had him in like this weird rotation where he wouldn't like start full time. I guess because if you're Alabama, you have talented players everywhere. Very, very weird. One of the best linemen that Alabama has, and he wouldn't be a full time starter. I wonder why. I wonder if there's anything to that, but the film doesn't say that there would there should be any reason why he should come off the field. So I found that to be pretty asinine. Um, bounce when he is not flailing maybe losing posture you know and and he's not you know leaning a little bit when he's not doing that he is overall a very balanced and under control player he understands leverage he understands that the lower man wins um keeps his feet moving in the run game understand uh, what i like about ekier he understands that there's an art to winning blocks and it's not just he plays hard and he plays fast but he's not just looking to demolish the guy in front of him he understands angles he understands angles. There's an art to winning blocks, manipulating angles and body positioning, not just playing like a bat out of hell, but playing to win the play, win the block so your ball carrier can get by you. So um, hasn't missed a game over the last three seasons, and and I think he played his best ball his senior year. Um, adjusts to last minute changes the defense shows and does, moves well out in space. He's always looking for work. Um, I think there are some flash plays that Ekure plays and he plays really tough but I don't think he's shown this massive improvement over the last couple years even though I do think 2022 was his was his best kind of film um he may not be the most consistent player he may not be the best athlete but I think for for where he's going to get drafted Ekier is a really really good prospect yeah and and like he's not a guy who's going to overpower defensive tackles and I think he can struggle to sustain you know single base blocks uh, but to kind of back up some of your points in there, like I'll just read you some of my my uh, notes on the write up I did. Is very high IQ player who understands combos and great awareness helping in pass pro. Uh, amazing working to the second level. Excellent working leverage to torque and redirect defender. So it's just like you said, he understands the game now. Is like and that shows up more so in the run game and pass pro. It's like again, it can be. And he can be, like you said, he can be overzealous at times where he'll leave himself unbalanced. Uh, but I think part of that is he needs to be better trying, he needs to be stronger working single blocks. But uh, I, I hope he can grow into, I like Emil Ecuador. I was, I was, I was thoroughly impressed with him. He was one of the first watches I did of this class too, by the way. He was the first watch I did of this class because I actually watched him in person. Um, he was solid at the senior bowl too. I was... Looking for him to, I'm, I'm kind of glad that he didn't blow me away at the Senior Bowl because then maybe he would have started rising up draft boards a little bit. He had a good Senior Bowl, didn't blow me out of the water, and I was really hoping that he wouldn't have a bad Senior Bowl because then I would look bad, um, and he didn't. All right, let's finish it off. And I almost forgot to put this guy in the list, and Shane was going to be mad because we've been we've been snubbing Michigan players. Like, we didn't put uh, DJ Turner on the corner episode. We didn't put Mozzie Smith on the defensive tackle episode. And then today I put out the tweet for the players we're going to cover. And I put out Nick Brocker from Ole Miss. And I told I, – I, we planned – like, we he's we bad. texted each other. <laughs> we we texted each other, like, you know, a couple days ago. Like, let's do Olu Oluwatimi out of Michigan, who we actually looked at on our way too early draft preview uh, last year. Uh Oh, Timmy, man, I, I got a hard time figuring this guy out. Six foot two, 309 pounds. Most of my notes on him are good, right? Yeah. Um, like he plays well. Like he plays with a good low pad level, good knee bend. Like hand usage is nice, strong grip to control blocks. Um, but to me, I just don't see it that makes me really want this guy. Like, I, I guess he's, a, he's an average athlete. Um, and there's times where, uh, you know, he, he just kind of in the pat- in pass protection can be head heavy and defense alignment will kind of pull him and get him off balance. And so I see that somewhat consistently. Um, and then in the run game, like we talk about other guys we're excited about, he's just kind of got average get off from the line of scrimmage. So he's not going to have any like knockback blocks. Um, but his hands land well, like replaces them well, sustains single blocks. Um, you know, he can torque defense alignment, uh, when he works in double teams, he can bring power. Um, but it's just, I don't see the it 
for me to like really love Olu Oluwatimi, which I guess is like pretty stupid, a stupid thing to say. But I don't know. I just view him as a fourth round player where it's like might be good, might be a career backup. Yeah, and I I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that because that's why we're talking about this guy last. Um, I want I kind of did like a double watch when I was watching Jack Campbell. I was watching Jack Campbell versus Michigan. I also was poking my head. I'm like, oh, who's this? Oh, I I remember the center from the Senior Bowl. Oh, look, he's actually playing well. He's actually moving kind of well here. He's actually playing with good leverage here, and he's moving to this you know secondary level here. So, um, I I kind of did like a little bit of a double watch when I was doing Jack Campbell and. Olubu Timi was all right, and I think that's fair. I mean, I, there's nothing yeah. that's really there's nothing that may even pop out at you, but I think he's a fine prospect, fine interior it's, offensive line prospect. So I, I thought the Senior Bowl was bad for him. Like I didn't think he looked good down there. Also, he plays in an offense where they have like three inch splits. Like they're playing very tight, um, and it allows guys to work together well. And he played against next to a guy like Zach Zinter, who I guess Zach Zinter went back into the. Uh, to the college this year. He was actually someone on my midseason mock. Um, so for Olu, like he transferred from Virginia this past year. And we, again, we talked about him on our way too early draft preview last summer. Um, and I kind of had some of the same takeaways then. It's just, I, I guess, like I said, my projection would be a career backup, but not just a career backup. Like he gets drafted, never plays, out of the league like a guy who is consistently in the nfl for eight nine years as a backup it's fair it's fair uh who are our our guys we miss so john Gaines, who has like super fast feet we talked about him with nick filato so i didn't put him on this list uh i'm currently looking into um there's chandler zavala who's from boynton beach florida bobby um, from NC State that the Giants met with virtually. And then Juice Scruggs is a guy that maybe we could have talked about. Um, yeah, the Penn, C- Penn State Giants, Center. Giants met with him at his pro day. May not mean anything, you know, when you meet somebody at a pro day. But Juice Scruggs uh, is around the same territory that uh, Olu Oluwatimi is. Kind of like maybe like that day three, the mid day three kind of guy. So Juice Scruggs from Penn State. Giants also met with him. And Anthony then they Bradford met with John- at LSU, very young. Um, but I didn't have 2022 film on him, so he's he's one that's like, I will have an evaluation done on him, but I'm just going to hope we get some 2022 film, and if not, I will do his 2021 and broadcast view in, in the last week, which is catch-up week, um, which is frustrating because I have four games of LSU defense, and I have none of LSU offense. How does that make any sense? I don't know. I don't know, so... I will be back on Friday. Tight ends and running backs. This will be very driven by meetings. Uh, and the Giants have met with a handful. So um, four four of each. So you don't really get to dive into either position a ton. But these are guys who the Giants met with. So good chance you know, one, ends, one ends up being a Giant. So make sure you don't miss out. And then we'll finish it off with wide receivers on Monday. So we appreciate you guys. We'll see you Friday. Until then, let's go Big Blue.